welcome to a new episode of PR360, and I'm your host, Brett Dice. If you could please subscribe to PR360 on all your favorite podcasting apps. Leave a five-star review. Subscribe to the YouTube page as well to get our lovely faces. If you are a visual person, that always helps as well. But with me, let me talk about Twitter. I mean, Twitter's been in the news for the past two weeks anyway, so might as well join in the conversation <laughs> at the same time. But with me is Samantha Kelly. She is the founder of Tweeting Goddess and Campaign Manager. She is a speaker. She is an author. She's the founder of Women's Inspire Network. But welcome to the show, Samantha. Thank you so much. Delighted to be here. Yes, and we're happy to have you as well. But my first question is, all my guests is, are you a coffee or tea drinker? Tea. Always tea. I'm Irish. Maybe that's why. I don't know. I love a cup of tea. I love a good cup of tea. <laughs> it could be. Do you have any like favorite good cup of teas or favorite teas that are, makes a good cup? Do you know what? Just the normal tea bags. Like we have Barry's tea or we have Lion's tea over here in Ireland. So um, any of those, not the lemon tea or the flavor teas. Ugh, no, don't like them. Hey. I mean, it's it's what you guys like or what you like, I, I guess to say over there. I'm a both drinker, actually. I like both, so it doesn't matter to me. If it's tea, I'll drink it. If it's coffee, I'll drink it, as long as it's good. And I love the smell of coffee. I used to work, at, when I lived in Paris years ago, I was no pair in Paris, and I remember the smell. I love the smell of coffee, but I hate the taste of it. I can't eat it. I can't drink it at all, like, or eat anything coffee flavor. Well, no. It's always depending on the actual roast and then also how you brew it. So some ways of brewing it makes other flavors come out. It's, I always say it's like wine. There's flavor notes to every coffee. Oh, okay. I used yeah. to be a barista, so I had to. Ah. This stuff. <laughs> but anyways, I gave a brief summary of your expertise. Can you give our listeners a little bit more about what you do? Yeah, I, I manage um, Twitter accounts. That's what I, how I started managing Twitter accounts. But now I've expanded into LinkedIn and marketing strategy. Uh, I didn't even know I was good at that, but apparently I am. So, you know, people have started coming to me for other platforms, not just Twitter, but Twitter is my superpower, really. Like, I would probably be one of the top Twitter experts in the world. There's about four of us out there, and I would be up there for sure. Nice. And that's and so, not bragging. It's true. <laughs> hey, if it's true, it's true. I mean, it can be bragging and still true. So, I mean, there you go. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, you know, Twitter is just, uh, it's one of those platforms, like there's so many social media experts, you know, so, but there are not many Twitter experts. So I was just really lucky that I found that niche. And Twitter is something that a lot of people probably listening or tuning in will will understand it. it's it's just so different from every other platform and there's a lot of fear around it because we hear the about a tweet that some someone put out and it's on the news and there's like a big fear around twitter but twitter is actually linkedin's living room it's actually got ceos decision makers like people go to twitter for the live news as it happens like it, particularly during covid people went to find out the latest numbers all that news and twitter is powerful powerful if you can build a community around you of brand advocates and the word can spread it's like it's like um twitter is like word of mouth on speed you know but that's why there's a fear around it i think is because oh what if i say the wrong thing but actually it's all about giving value it's all about making people feel special and not ignoring anyone and it's all about how you make people feel nice and so i mean is that part of the misconception of twitter of like saying the wrong thing. Oh no, I said something that some random person didn't like and now I have to pay the price, I guess. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And you see, the funny thing is, I remember I wasn't even saying anything that I thought was bad. It was like something nice and they were like, oh, you, the tweeting goddess one. Oh, she's, you know, she could do it losing a few pounds. Block. She, who does she think she is? Block. You know, I just blocked them. It'd be great if you could do it in real life, wouldn't it? block you know it's like so twitter is like so it's so easy to create your feed like people keep asking me about elon musk i, I don't even see any of that stuff because i you know i don't follow people that are going mad about it i don't follow those people i stay away from controversy i add value and i use twitter for good 
Gotcha. And then the real life block button is just walking away, really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. We, we should use it more often, actually. Mm. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I, I guess, I mean, that's, that's the, uh, the other part is the strategies for Twitter. So, I mean, for PR mm -hmm. pros, how do you, how about they implement that? Cause I know like PR pros know about Twitter. I know a lot of PR pros are on Twitter, but it's different when yeah. it's you and it's different when it's a brand. So how can they implement it well enough where they get that community? Cause that, cause that's all I hear about Twitter is all about the community. And it's true. I'm just saying that's all I hear about it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really powerful. Like the people on Twitter, we don't want to waste our time. Okay, the demographic would be age 35 to 55 and the highest growing demographic would be the over 55s. So a lot of us have been there, done that. We've got the t-shirt, we have either had a divorce or or grief or been through some kind of crap. So we want to just hang out with good people and we want to kind of there's a lot of lonely people out there too, Brett, you know, so it's important, you know, a lot of people go to Twitter to kind of find people they can speak to because they can get involved in controversy, uh, sorry, in conversations, not controversy, in conversations. And, um, you know, my mother's on it. She's 72, you know. Um, so, I mean, if you want to find people who love knitting or people who love kite surfing, you can just put into search kite surfing and then you'll find all the people, all the organizations, everything to do with kite surfing. Every single tweet that has mentioned kite surfing, you will find. When it comes to PR, you know, you have the journal request, you have the PR request hashtag. And what I do from so from what I do is I would actually go through the journal request hashtag and I would retweet some of them because I know some of my followers might be able to help them or I would tag someone that I think would be useful and then I add that journalist to a Twitter list and then what I do is I keep an eye on the journalist and maybe I might pop into that Twitter list every now and then and say, right, how can I help Mary today? How can I help John today? And it might just be another retweet. And then, so the journalist sees, okay, this lady's an ally. She's friendly. So, you know, I'm going to actually, you know, maybe if I, I know that she's a Twitter expert or I know that she talks about starting a business with no money and stuff, I'll put her on my little list, you know? So when you build, that's how I build relationships with journalists, actually. And I've had, I actually reached out to one journalist today for a client of mine because I have clients, you know, who they do a, a six week program with where I help raise their profile. And this particular journalist, like I'd never reached out to him before, but because I was able to DM him because he was following me, like it wasn't strange for me to D to reach out to him because he, he was already engaging with me. We were already chatting on Twitter. I'd already retweeted some of his tweets. He would like the odd tweet of mine. So it wasn't strange for me to reach out to him. So I said, look, I have a client, you know, she has a book and this is the story. It might fit in with your audience. And he was like, absolutely. Here's my email. You know, so that's what I do. And that's how I use Twitter. Gotcha. And then should PR pros look out for like the new communities tab where you can actually build a community around it or should you, or should you stay away from that? Cause I mean, for example, I'm on a few podcasting communities and it does help cause it mm. does kind of bridge that gap between all of us because we're in the same industry. Mm. So we help each other. Like for instance, this past week I got a huge uptick in downloads and I'm like, what the hell is like, what's going on with this? And then I found out that Samsung was doing something weird in the background where it downloaded every it downloaded one of my episodes quite a bit for the users, even though the users may have not listened to it. So it was like me figuring out what's going on and like, and you were able to ask the community. Yes, absolutely. And I think community is so important. And that's why I created women's inspire network because I felt lonely working from home and I had these questions. I'd be like, Oh no, how do I do that? You know? And you know, I was able to ask things and maybe think, you know, if some, someone hadn't paid me on time or, you know, maybe I was thinking, oh, the customer must be right. No, the customer's not always right, by the way, you know. And so it was nice to kind of build that community of people just like me that were driven, determined, wanted to succeed, wanted to learn. Um, I needed to be around people just like me. So I understand the community thing totally. However, the community tab, uh, that community's I, I haven't found it very useful because all of my I have a bigger community and I don't want to exclude anyone. I'm very inclusive. So if they want to be part of my Women's Inspire Network community, yes, they go and they register and they pay their 20 euros and we have a Facebook group for that. Um, the communities on Twitter, I don't find it very useful because maybe it's because I want 
don't want anyone excluded because I have so many followers. I don't want someone to feel left out. Um, I do have circles. There's circles as well where you can just have. A, I know in my circle, I have people who I know will retweet my tweets that I know I will like I will reciprocate, you know, people that I really would have good relationships with. Um, and then there's Twitter spaces like there's so much Twitter newsletters. But, you know, at the end of the day, for anyone listening in, if you feel like you, you're not sure if you want to be on Twitter or not, the main th- thing to think about is if you're not good with people, don't go on Twitter. You know, if you're an idiot offline, you'll be an idiot online. OK, so, you know, if you're not good with people, then you probably won't enjoy Twitter. If you are not going to give value and you just want to sell, you won't get on well on Twitter. If you like having conversations and you you like to be entertained and you want to be educated and you want to give value and help others, you will do well on Twitter. So helping others is a big part of what I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, spaces. I mean, that's another thing we want to talk about as well. I, I knew it came up because of. Was it Clubhouse? Clubhouse was the little darling in, mm. during the pandemic because everybody's like, I need to talk to somebody. And it was, <laughs> yeah. it was just yeah. like a classroom full of people talking to each other, basically. But yeah. And yeah. then Twitter is like, hey, we should do this too. And um, I, like you said, one of the podcasting groups that I'm in does it, but I never join their podcasting hour because I'm like, I have to be there. And maybe I just don't want to be there <laughs> for it. Plus, I have to do it on my phone and I have like professional audio equipment and it bugs me if I have terrible audio. So, I mean, that's more my issue, but still, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like. It, you can actually join in Twitter in spaces a, on desktop, by the way. Yeah. Oh, you can. But, okay, good. Finally. But you can't go on stage. That's the only thing uh, you can listen. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it, is it something that's, that is preferable for PR people to use spaces. I feel like it's very niche to the certain, like certain industry, like crypto, even though crypto is like, yeah, no, totally no tanking. look, I, I love Twitter, but Twitter spaces, I, I made some nice new connections there and some new friends there and acquaintances, but I find I get more value from LinkedIn audio. Um, I mean, and, and, and we, you know, we're time poor. We have to figure out, okay, where are we going to spend our time? So if you're going to spend your time, what do people on LinkedIn need? They need PR. They need help with social media because they're busy. They don't have time. They want someone to do it for them. So find where your audience are likely hanging out. Um, Twitter spaces, I found now they do have more money on Twitter and LinkedIn for buying things. It's great for online sales and driving traffic. But when it came to Twitter spaces, I just found, "Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I like Clubhouse. Um, but I didn't quite, I'm not as big a fan as I should be, if you think about it, but that's insane that sometimes I will get bored and I'll just open a Twitter space and I call it a cup of tea with tweeting goddess and it does get really busy, but I just chat, I just chat, you know, and, and people have asked me to host a room for them on their behalf. I do think it's great to reach a new audience, get more followers, but not necessarily for sales. I found. Gotcha. And then, I mean, speaking of Twitter being new, can you <laughs> help with people understanding it? Cause I know a lot about it cause I just keep up with what's going on because it's important to understand. Like it mm-hmm. keeps on changing. It always is changing right now. So yeah. for those that don't know, can you help them like understand like what's the new things? I mean, I know Elon did Twitter blue, or the new version of Twitter blue, it kind of completely derailed. He brought it back. <laughs> now he's doing a new mm. version of it. So like what's new for PR pros to understand and how to effectively use Twitter? Should they get Twitter blue for their business? No, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I mean, I would pay if I, I have a verification already. So, um, if I lost that, maybe I would, but maybe, I don't have Twitter blue over here in Ireland. We don't have it here in Ireland. So, you know, it still hasn't rolled out completely. Um, but do you need it? I know that for me being verified as opposed to the other Twitter experts, it gets me more business because what you're going to choose the one with the verification, right? Um, but um, the new things, it doesn't really matter about the new things. What matters is how you use Twitter or any other platform. Okay, figure out 
Why are you there? What value are you going to bring to the platform? Um, who are the people that you need to be talking to on the platform? Um, and it's about adding value and helping others. So it doesn't matter what platform it is, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, whatever. If you're not engaging with your followers, forget about it. You know, it's a waste of time. Nobody wants to be sold to anymore. We don't want to be sold to. We don't want an ad in our faces, but but we do want experiences. So if you can add value, which I do, I, I sometimes do a little video saying, this is how you pin a tweet. And I would use Restream, something similar to this. And I say, this is how you pin a tweet. And it was funny because I was doing all these other things like how to use Twitter spaces, how to use Clubhouse. But actually, it was the basic, basic things that I forget that new people don't know, like how to pin a tweet, how to do a tweet that will get reach, how to add an image, how to add a video, all of these things. So when you start adding value, so let's say you're in PR, you could say five tips on reaching out to a journalist, five uh, things to think about before you write your press release, five reasons to hire a PR person. These are all, that's value, 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 value. So if you're giving value and you you add a, a, an image or a video, you can add short form video to Twitter. You can go live on Twitter, which I love. Um, and you don't need fancy equipment. I know it is nicer to have the fan equipment, like you have the great sound and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, like I'll give you an example. I did, um, I, I have a, a van that says Women's Inspire Network all over it. And I was at the supermarket and this lady came up to me, this older lady, and she was like, well done, well done. I was like, well done for what? And she goes, I love the way you're supporting women. I love anyone that supports women. I was like, oh, thank you so much. And it turned out we started chatting and she said um, she worked in a prison, a women's prison, you know, and she was retired. And she said, well, I just love, you know, what you're doing. And do you know what? I was having a really bad day that day. So it really made me feel good that I had, you know, stood out so much to that woman that she went and took the effort and came over to me and spoke. And it was lovely to listen to her story. So I did a little video. It had been raining. My eye, my mascara was running down my face. My hair was all curly. And guess what? That's the video that got the most views. The one where I didn't look perfect. And mm. the message, it was just the message. I was talking about feeling, oh my God, this makes everything worthwhile. You know, it was lovely to get that woman coming up to me. You know, and it was the message in it that people wanted. Yeah, I agree. Unless you're doing something that I'm doing that needs the equipment, don't don't buy that. You're spending thousands of dollars for no point. Plus your phone for the camera purpose is on par with a lot of DSLR DSLRs right now. Like I have a DSLR, but you, if I use my pixel seven pro, you probably couldn't tell the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even you saying DLS or whatever you said, DC, what did you say? D, D it's called DSLR. It's a, it's a, it's a camera okay. that interchangeable lenses. Right. See, see the way you just went out with that. Like, and I'm like, what, what, what is that? You see, you know what that is but I don't know what it is or someone in the audience might not know what it is. So, you know, you could even do, Hey, here's what it, this is, you know, and, uh, that's adding value, you know, because you, people are nervous of video as well. So that's why audio is great because pe a lot of people don't like to go on camera. I love going on camera. I love the spotlight. I love the razzle dazzle, but some people don't like camera, and you don't have to go on camera. You can actually take a video of something else and speak over it. You know, and there's so many things and I'm sure, you know, you know, you can do the sound waves over a picture, you know, it doesn't have to be like there's so many. The technology is out there, folks. It's about us getting creative. Just always think people buy from people. So it's the stuff that you're putting out. I know it sounds a bit airy fairy, but the stuff that you're putting out is going to attract what you want. I mean, on my bio, it says nice people collector. You know, so it, it, I attract nice people. <laughs> it's great. And people always comment on it because it's really, it makes me look approachable. It makes, you know, it's it's a whole image thing, you know. And I think if you're in PR, definitely put your picture up, not your logo. So put your smiley picture up because people buy from people. But then you can put your logo on the header, you know, fill in your bio. Actually, look at your bio now, today, if you're listening to this and say, would I follow me? Would I click follow if I was a stranger? So have a look at your own bio and say, could I really tweak that? Because does it say what I do? Does it say how I can add value? Does it say how I can help people? And, and just tweak it. And you'd be surprised how many more followers you get just by doing that alone. Mm. True. And then um, since you aren't a 
don't know about Twitter Blue, but there is a new update coming. I don't know when, but he is delineating different types of verified. So yes, the blue I saw will be that. individual and yeah. company or organization. Yeah. Yeah. The gold is the yeah. is the business now. So it's gonna be a gold icon with a check mark. Mm. And then the gray one's gonna be government. So is that would that be beneficial or blue? So for yeah. me, the added features were for the eight dollars a month. Now I found it so I follow him and I find it funny when people complain to him about it and he keeps on saying that will be eight dollars. Yeah. Like I find I that know. really funny, even though it's yeah. when people get mad. But like for me, it was the features that I don't care about the verified thing. People can make fun of me if I buy it, whatever, fine. But I care about like the 1080p video. I care about the edit button. I care about those features over if I'm verified or or not. Yeah, same. Look, if they took the, look, I would, it would be a bit of a bummer if they took the blue tick off me that I have already. But people can, t can click on the blue tick and see if it was already verified or not as well, by the way, in case they didn't know that. You can actually click on someone's blue tick to see, is it because they're subscribed to Twitter blue? And if you look, click on mine, it will say because I'm notable in government or whatever, or business or something. Um, but, you know, if, if it went tomorrow, it, it, it doesn't matter. What I care about are my community, my followers, um, my clients. That's what I care about. And I've built up enough of a reputation, in fairness, that, you know, it's really not going to make much difference to me. It might to new people looking at me, but I think I've enough of a profile now that would be all right. <laughs> no worries. And so do you think Twitter chats are still viable? Because, I mean, that's the old school of spaces, the Twitter mm. chats, the... The, the community, the, uh, yeah. The old school way was like tweet chats or something like that, and then they changed it to Twitter chats. They got more business like. Mm -hmm. But do you think those are still viable yeah. to actually do for PR pros or brands, or should they just join other ones that are more that have been around for long longer? I used to have a Twitter chat. I had several. I have one that I started on behalf of a client. It's still going, Belfast Hour. Um, it does make it does build community because I know that they meet up in real life um, every year and they have a big event. And that's how I started my Women's Inspire Network as well. I started with an Irish biz party hashtag. And it started, so, you know, it did me no harm at all. It built community. You know, I monetized it, all of that stuff. So I suppose if you build enough, if you're, it's very hard work. It's very hard work to keep engaging with that community. Um, what I did is I moved them to a Facebook group. And I moved them into a group and then I moved them into a subscription model so that they had to pay 20 euros a month to be a part of this group. Um, so, you know, if anyone is listening and, and is a woman in business, uh, the Women's Inspire Network, doc, like Women's Inspire Network dot com is, is the site. If you do want to join us, it's a lovely community. But in PRs, I think it's useful like what are you going to gain from it who's going to join in pr chat other pr people i mean is that going to get you business you know you might get referrals like if someone comes to someone about pr for crypto and you don't do pr for crypto you know that kind of thing but at the end of the day you want to build a community of who are your biggest audience business owners so maybe start a business chat instead and you be the host of it and that way you'll get more clients so like for example like we could start up like a PR chat for PR because then I would get guests for this. That that would be my more yes. high value prop. And exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. You have you, to have a name. What what is the aim? What what is the outcome that you want from it? So for me, I felt lonely, but I also wanted to find businesses who needed my services. So and, yeah, and to be fair, it's it's not PR for crypto. It's crisis calm for crypto. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no, I was just, I was just use it as an example. I, I know. I just had to make you know, a joke because, because crypto is just like completely just after FTX and everything is just going, <laughs> it's just going down real fast. I don't know. Honestly, I just stick to what I'm good at. I stick to what I'm good at, but I know that I did. Um, I actually just a little story. I was on a panel there recently with a Sure. an editor of Silicon Republic, which is a big kind of cool tech publication over here. And I had never met her before. And then she connected with me on LinkedIn. And then I said, look, you know, I think we should do a LinkedIn audio about how 
how to get uh, how to build relationships, how to build valuable relationships with journalists. And we did the LinkedIn audio and it was so popular. It did so well. You know, so it's it's all about the topics, isn't it? It's all about what it is. Like I gave her an opportunity, she made me look good, um, but also I got her a couple of people who would help her publication. So it's all about what way can you help each other through this? If you're going to spend a lot of time on a Twitter chat, make sure you know what outcome you're looking for and make sure you're getting results. You know, even if you got a sponsor for the Twitter chat, that's that's better as well, you know? Mm. And then what do you think the future of Twitter is going to be? Is it going to be Elon bringing back Vine? Because Vine was the original TikTok before TikTok was TikTok. Or is it going to be mm. like just smoothing things out, adding extra features that we may not even know about yet? Like, where do you see the future of Twitter going? I see audio coming into Twitter spaces. And I predicted LinkedIn audio, by the way. I absolutely did. I remember I did. And, I, and everyone was like, really? I was like, yeah, Italian. But, um, I think more um, keeping it, everything within Twitter. So the video, video calls, meetings, scheduling, all of that stuff. Um, I know you can schedule on Twitter now. We, you know, I think they're going to try and keep everybody in Twitter so that we don't even have to go to Calendly. So we don't even have to go to Zoom. Now, there is an app coming out called We Do. Um, and I am, um, they have come on board behind Women's Inspire Network. And that is an app that's actually going to do everything in it. It's going to be for freelancers, you know, to get paid on time and stuff like that. So definitely keep an eye out for that as well. Um, but I do think Twitter is going to get video more involved, like short form video, cool kind of features that we can edit them like you can on TikTok and Instagram, like Reels. And I just feel they're going to add a lot more video wise. And actually, I mean, I'm being asked to write write my predictions later, so I have to actually write this. So I think I'll say that in it. Well, yeah, I mean, they already had the the technology. They bought Vine. Oh God, ten yeah. year, eleven years. It was it was over a decade. Yeah. It seems like so they have the yeah. tools to do it. It's just a shame that yeah. old Twitter didn't know how to utilize Vine because they could have been the TikTok of today. But yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. That's that's what happens. So yeah, um, I think tick, I think tick, TikTok, I think Twitter is is definitely here. To, I don't think it's going anywhere. I really don't. I mean, it's so effective for disasters and anything happening in the world and live news as it happens. I don't think Twitter is actually going anywhere. And so, fun question for you: What is your favorite feature on Twitter? My favorite feature on Twitter is Twitter lists. Our Twitter lists, Twitter lists, the best thing ever. Actually, we didn't mention them. Twitter lists, I did. I mentioned them when it came to journalists. I actually would add, I have a media list, but it's locked. So you can't see it. If you go to view my lists, you won't be able to see that list. Um, but I did do a lovely Twitter list of Irish gift ideas. After the pandemic, I kind of, you know, people were struggling. And I said, right, how can I add value here? So I created an Irish gift ideas list of all people that create lovely Irish made stuff. And um, cause I have a lot of Americans that follow me and Irish Americans and um diaspora and stuff. And I think uh, there's 300 and something on the list and there's 900 people following the list, which is really lovely because I got messages from the people. And I just asked if you want me to add you, let me know. And like, I didn't ask them for anything. They were like, yeah, I'd love to know. And it was like a girl makes little baby boots or something you know and um they actually messaged me and said they got a good few sales coming up to christmas from that list so that's lovely to know isn't it you know they, so they're powerful oh, twitter yeah, lists that's... yeah i'm giving a service by having twitter lists of different kind of things yeah i mean it's always great hearing when we actually help out each other instead of tearing people down yeah and i know it sounds fluffy and that's why i have nice people collector on my bio i don't get the horrible people following me it's great but you know what that's what works and that's what people need right now if you can give hope and if you can help someone and you know even if it is just a retweet i mean that can make such a difference to someone especially small business all right so where can people find you online twitter <laughs> <laughs> twitter and twitter no uh, everywhere really um tweetinggoddess.com or womensinspirenetwork.com. All right. Any final thoughts for our listeners? Just if you're going to use Twitter, make sure your audience are there. 
And if you want, after this podcast, after this interview, like reach out and say, oh, I heard you on the interview with Brett and, you know, tag me and I'll happily retweet one of your tweets for you. Um, so do reach out and say you heard about it here and then we'll look after you and retweet it for you. All right. Thank you, Samantha, for joining PR360 and sharing knowledge on Twitter. Welcome. And thank you for listening to PR360. As always, please subscribe to PR360 on all your favorite podcasting apps. Hit that subscribe button and leave a five-star review if you like this podcast. But join me next week to talk to another great thought leader in the PR industry. All right, guys, stay safe. Get to understanding Twitter. And if you need to be on Twitter for your brand, you know, you just need to be on it yourself. And see you next week. Later.